Cheers, guys. Epics 911. Welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for Tuesday, November 29th, 2016. Let's jump right into VR. Start with a bit of preamble. I want to talk about the feedback that I requested on the news episode dealing with motion sickness. And what I was hoping to highlight, guys, was that motion sickness is not a binary condition. It's not something that's you either have or you don't have. It's not on or off, in other words. It's something with a lot of in-betweens, a lot of, you know, variability. And if you go take a look at the comment section, that's exactly what you're going to see. You're going to see everything from doesn't bother me to it's a minor inconvenience to the extreme. And yeah, unfortunately, Terry, I am talking about you again. But you are probably the most severe case that I have read where for Terry, two minutes with the wrong game could spell hours of misery, being nauseous and recovering uh, afterwards. I do think it's going to get better. One thing we got to keep in mind is while VR has been worked on for years, you could say decades behind the scenes, it's never been tested on this scale. And let's face it, us early adopters, for a lot of the technology, we are the beta testers, plain and simple. And it's going to get better with regards to motion sickness. I don't think it'll ever be eliminated, but it's definitely going to get better. And Terry, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I th I'm thinking you'd agree. If it was the difference between I play this for two minutes and I'm deathly ill for five hours to, you know what? I can play it for an hour. After an hour, I get a little dizzy. You'd probably take that hands down any day of the week. Again, don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm fairly certain you would choose that option, right? So I do think we're headed there. And I just wanted to highlight that, how variable it really is, right? Even remedies. Some people, they work, you know, conditioning yourself. Others, mixed results. Others, doesn't work at all. So next up, games that I've been playing. Well, I'm going to confess right now, I was very close to picking up Final Fantasy XV today. Really close. And those of you on my Steam, you know it's not hidden what I play. Civilization VI is the only 2D game that I've played since getting my VR units. And I don't say that out of any stupid badge of like pride where I'm so hardcore into VR, I don't play, you know, 2D games. Not at all. I've just been so into VR, I haven't had the desire to play two game, uh, 2D games. Civilization VI broke that down a little bit, and uh, Final Fantasy XV is breaking it down a bit more, but I think I'll wait until the last two weeks of December, which is when I'm on holidays, and grab it then. And then lastly, I wanted to talk about the message boards I said I would have up by Sunday. Those of you who watched my Saturday episode know it was really late. In fact, it was released Sunday morning. That's put me behind schedule a little bit. Definitely still my intention to launch that, though. Could take upwards of another week just because these are work days now that I'm into. All right, let's start with the news and let's talk about next gen lighthouse beta uh, stations, base stations that HTC Vive is working on. And these could bring rapid reductions in cost. So let's talk about the base stations for the HTC Vive. If you go to the accessory page, these things aren't cheap. In fact, after the HMD, they're probably the most expensive component. $134 to HTC is what you per, uh, pay for one. If you had some kind of catastrophe where both broke on you, that's $268 US, which is no small amount of change. So what they're working on behind the scenes now, so right now what happens is there's two motors in each base station and one sweeps X, one, one sweeps Y. What they're hoping to do is with a generating a V-shaped pattern, and I'll have the pictures up for that, eliminating the requirement for two motors requiring just one. So of course, that could reduce it significantly. And 
the estimate that they had on road to VR is as follows. So right now, $800 US for the full HTC bundle after introducing the next base stations could reduce it by about 17% to 665 bucks. So that's better than $100 we just had as a discount. What is that? $135, $135 uh, discounted because of that. And you can bet if it's happening there, it may be happening in other areas, possibly the Vives HMD as well, right? Although I haven't heard of any uh, work being done in that respect. And for the Rift, PlayStation VR 2 components are going to get cheaper over the years and we'll, we're going to see price reductions. Just like I was fairly confident we would see some for the holiday season, uh, we're probably going to see them when Windows or Microsoft rather, you know, starts introducing the Windows 10 compatible HMDs from all those vendors that they're associated with. Next up, a new line of removable PlayStation VR skins to customize your set. The HMD, the controllers themselves. Yeah, there's probably some that I would be into. Um, some science fiction ones, some fantasy ones, if there was like Dark, uh, Dark Souls themed. Absolutely. But um, yeah, right now, $13.99, or currently it's on sale, $9.99. That just covers the front faceplate. You've got a second choice, which is a full option from this company, and I'll include the link below. And this one is $16.99, but also currently on sale for $12.99. Allows you to deck out the top band of your headset, and then you've got, so it's the whole of the headset, and then a third choice for your move controllers, which is $8.99 per set or $6.99 currently. So there's a bunch of different themes. Check that out if that's something that uh, you're interested in. That is now available. Next news piece, VR being used to recreate crime scenes in the courtroom. This is a Business Insider uh, news piece. And the first thought in my head when I was just a few sentences in was, wow. Could you not, by putting jurors in an HMD with a VR-rendered environment, bias the situation, right? Could you not, you know, suggestively lead jurors in a specific direction just by how you develop it? Now, of course, you've got, you know, uh, the plaintiff side or the prosecution side if it's criminal. Well, and this is for crime scenes, so that's exactly what it would be. Yeah how fair would they be? So I understand where the article is going with this. I think, look, medical industry, education, we talked about so many industry this makes sense for. I think some aspects of, you know, the justice system, it could work for in law, but courtrooms, I think we're a little ways off on seeing that. But hey, it's an interesting article. And just because we're a ways off, doesn't mean work isn't being done. You'll see that in the link that uh, Staffordshire University in England is, you know, one example of a university, uh, a law department on the campus that's working in that direction. Next up, the virtual reality industry report for 2016. So this was the report where I got those figures from a few weeks ago where I talked about the estimated sales and I said, Sony PlayStation VR by the end of 2016, 745,000, Vive 450, uh, Oculus 355. Now that I come to look at that, I think I have that backwards, but I digress. That's not the point of this. It's the other statistics that they've now added to their website. If you wanna purchase the full report, it's 1500 bucks, it's not cheap. But let's look at some of the other stats based on the research that they've done. Six million Americans say they intend to purchase a PlayStation VR this year versus five million for the Rift and just two million for the HTC Vive. However, production will not be able to fulfill PC headset demand at the current rate. 28% of Americans have heard of PlayStation VR, which makes sense. Sony's a recognizable brand. 
22% for Oculus Rift, 21% for Samsung Gear VR, and then a lowly 5% for the HTC Vive, which is unfortunate. Like I said, I love my Vive, but um, it, I get where they're coming from because before this, what was HTC? They were a Chinese mobile phone manufacturer that most of us really didn't deal with or hear from. VRs changed that for us, early adopters and you know what I would call the hobbyist enthusiasts, but for the vast majority of people, and it doesn't have to be the States, it could be Canada, it could be Europe, Asia. Yeah, they're not gonna recognize the HTC Vive. 52% are, are, are sure they will purchase a device at some point. 26% say it's too expensive. And the final stat, 49% have not heard of any headset brands at all. So there you have it. Uh, yeah, interested in hearing your, your guys' thoughts on this or the previous news pieces. As always, guys, cheers and definitely catch you on the VR flip side.